gonna check mark these. This is such a good idea, Baggins. Okay, in the, I don't know if I'll get to all of these, but in the ball tracer, Zen, actually check, give me one second. I have to check something really quick, which will tell me how much longer I can stream. Okay, I'm, I can keep going a little longer. I can keep going a little longer. Are you working on the thumbnail? Ah, wow, okay, you uh, work fast, sir. I wanna do the Batiste review as well. That one will be, a, we'll do like the in-depth Batiste review as well, I think. In the ball tracers in Brig comp, the teams that were running, that teams are running in first and third stage. Why hasn't there, why has there been a swap from Sigma to Diva and sometimes Ash to Sombra? Okay, so from Sigma to Diva, the Sigma to Diva, at least recently was because Sigma got banned. But the reason why people t went Diva was because teams are getting better at diving harder and committing a lot harder on backline. So if you get a Discord and Zen, you really want to have Matrix, especially if there's a Sombra and a Tracer and a ball on the field. Sigma alone isn't gonna be able to keep them alive. Um, now what Sigma does do is he pokes out and does a lot of damage and he's really good at controlling space. Um, but if he's at a risk of being hacked uh, and his Zen is constantly getting Discorded and Dove, then he's gonna have a hard time getting value. Um, as well as he's not as strong of a hero as he was about what 10 11 months ago when he was played a little bit more on the composition so sigma ash is fine for example on a long sightline comp where it's a little bit harder to dive and it's very easy to poke but in maps where it's very easy to quickly dive the sigma is going to feel a little worse and that's why heroes like you'll go from ash to sombra because sombra doesn't need the sightline sombra can just dive you whenever um so it really depended on the play style the map uh and what like what teams were, like, were, were, were teams preferred slower or, excuse me not slower but more poke oriented versus more dive oriented variations because you can play sigma into dive you just need to be able to whittle the dive down a little bit and be able to kite it out a little bit and there's some maps and some uh compositions where it just didn't feel very good to do that okay um to improve at a fast rate would you recommend solo queue or duo queue solo queue solo queue solo queue solo queue solo queue solo queue, solo queue. duo queue if it, it's fun for you and it increases your motivation to play the game but duo queue means that you're tying your improvement to somebody else uh, i'd never ever recommend duo queue unless you're a pro player not it's not by the way it's not a terrible thing it's not it's just not it, but it's it's like uh it's like you know eating a little bit of sugar is it going to kill you no but if you if you can avoid it it would be best to avoid it um, that being said, if a little bit of sugar, you know, a little, uh, you know, a sugar cookie every day is what gives you the motivation to get up and work out, then, you know, more power to you. have the sugar cookie, you know, uh, when playing a dive mirror, what is going, when is going for backline trades for contesting enemies backline where your own is under attack or goody? If you don't go for it, what should the alternative look like? Do you jump their monkeys or monkeys do you chill on the monkey? So basically the, the reason why you would trade backlines is when your hero is not very good at peeling. In other words, if I'm a monkey if I dot bubble my own backline, that can be somewhat helpful, but it's not the most helpful thing in the world. So that's why a lot of monkeys will often trade backlines. Whereas a diva, that becomes a lot more of the situation of is my backline safe or do I need to assist my monkey? In other words, um, if I'm a diva, there is a lot more that goes into the decision of whether I'm helping my monkey or not. Does my monkey have primal? Does my backline have a good position? Does my backline have rally? right? Did the enemy team have something like a pulse bomb? And so that's when it becomes a lot trickier about what should I be playing for here as a diva. Um, Sombra is another one where is, who can provide a lot of value on dives, but it can also provide a lot of peel as well. Because if you break that monkey bubble and you hack the enemy diva hunting the enemy monkey, you really punish that dive. But also it hurts not having the Sombra on the enemy backline as well. So um, a lot of it depends on the hero strengths. Uh, for example, something like a Diva Sombra, it's a lot more up in the air. But something like a Tracer Ball Monkey, those heroes don't peel well. Maybe a Tracer can mirror, but especially like a Monkey Ball, what are you going to do as a ball? Slam the tanks that dive your backline? Very rarely is that. There's some circumstances where Ball does peel, but usually you're trying to go for backline because that's just what the hero is good at. He's got nothing to protect his team outside of that. Um, so a lot of it depends on the hero that you're playing, and a lot of it depends on the position that you're in. If your backline has a really good position and is totally safe, then you can look more for traits because you you, you know that the enemy team is not going to be able to, and you want to punish the enemy team's backline bad position. It also depends on ultimates. If you have a rally, you don't need to peel. <laughs> Nothing kills rally, almost ever. Um, 
So you need to be keeping that in mind. Um, yeah, uh, Drew, hey Drew. Uh, I got your message, I haven't, there's a couple of, you and a couple other players have asked me about scheduling. I haven't had a chance to get back to you yet. I'll probably get back to you today. Uh, people need to also remember lower ranks in every game you lose. There's stuff you could have done more to contribute. The was at point fingers. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, yeah, but it basically it depends on the situation, depends on the heroes that you're playing, depends on the old economy, uh, and it really depends on what you guys want to do. Like there are, there is almost always a gray area about whether it would be better to trade or whether to peel. Um, there are times where Overwatch League monkeys will bubble their backline. It just depends. Um, yeah. A good rule of thumb is if the enemy team is in a really, really punishable position, the enemy backline, you want to get them. You want to hit them. Um, uh, whereas if your backline is very safe or, or very fragile and needs extra help, then you want to help them. Hey, Imagine, I don't really care about anything that you have to say. So you have my permission to pipe down. Hey, thank you, Susie. Susie Jupe, that's nice. Uh, are we flaming Spilo again? No, I'm flaming Magid. Um, oh, I'm gonna add, watch this, watch this, watch this. Think. Questions answered. This is just amazing. Okay, Spilo, please help me. I've been learning Genshin. I know I suck with them. I've lost 300 stars in the last couple of days because I've just been playing Genshin. I don't really care too much about it. That's why I would stop. I don't know. Actually, how do I actually do something to help my team? Where do I position? Because I've heard you talk about offing goes up whenever I'm in game. I just forget to take an offing. I'll feel like I'm doing nothing or die. Should I practice? Should I just play games, go into turns? You can do play turns. Okay. Okay. Number one, watch the in depth Genji review guide I did on YouTube. I, I assume maybe you've seen it, maybe you've not. I don't know. Number two, when that's done, I want you to play a couple of games and then I need you to look at your replays. You cannot replicate the stuff I talk about in reviews unless you actually look at the information and then look at what you're actually doing. You're right. It's very easy to watch a review and be like, oh, I understand perfectly. And then to get to a game and be like, ah, and not understand anything and to get overwhelmed. That's totally normal. It's okay. The information that I give you isn't there for you to immediately play better. That will never, ever, almost ever happen. It's there so that and you have the information, you have that special magnifying glass so that you can then analyze your own gameplay after you've already played it. You, you, you need you need to, you need to, it gives you this to think about while you're playing and then it gives you tools to analyze once the game is done. So if you feel like, oh, I'm, uh, where is it, where is it, where is it? Uh, off angles, but when I play a game, I just forget. Okay, that's bad right there. But or I'll take an off angle and I feel like I'm doing nothing. Okay, why? Did you look at the replay? Did you go, oh no, my team was back here and I was way too far forward, or my off angle was really bad because of what? You need to you need to be answering these questions. And you need to settle down too. You need to settle down. Chill out. I've dropped 500 SR in a single day. Happens. It happens. Set some goals. Study your study your study your footage a little bit. Take some notes. Look at how you're training. Could you be training a little bit more efficiently, a little bit more consistently? Make small adjustments. Remember the five percent rule. Five percent better. Your goal isn't to solve Genji or to climb back the three hundred SR that you've lost. It's just to be a, a little better. Just be a little better. Imagine's a nice guy. No, no, no. no I didn't hate that guy. I've been recently watching a summer showdown game between Rain and Shanghai, and Rain rolled out in Sim May Rush against a Ball Pharmacy comp, and I couldn't understand how should Rain play to beat Shanghai's comp. Uh, the point, basically, point pressure. Uh, I don't know what map it would be, but I can only imagine that they're just finding a way to push cart or capture points, because you're right, it is a pretty not it is not a good matchup at all. So Atlanta must have been confident that they could have been able to get enough objective pressure to make it work, because yeah, it sucks. There might be some other extenuating circumstance that I'm not aware of that, that made it that explains it, but yeah, that is not a, a matchup that you can do a lot of. Is it necessary for an offing player to be able to play hog both in rank and play? No, no. It, it might be helpful in the future. I mean, it is never a bad thing, but it's not necessary. No, he's the probably one of the least necessary heroes to learn across the board. Uh, hit scan, learning bastion. Uh, Projectile player learning Junkrat. Moira is more useful than Hog, probably. 
Okay, where do you begin when teaching in a brawl, running bots, how to APAC ball for on console and league scrim scene, and how do I maintain my sanity? Huh, joke. <laughs> uh, work on your timing, like work on talking about how you need to set up uh, an angle on every dive. It doesn't have to be taking the map control and controlling the map, it gets a little complicated. So just start with guys, we're gonna three, two, one, and all dive in every single time. Never, ever, ever is acceptable for my monkey or ball to be slamming in and for my DPS not to be going in. And then, and then in addition to that, always have one angle. Uh, the London Spitfire used to call it a cut. Like you cut off the enemy's escape route. You don't have your monkey coming from high ground, then your diva's from here, and then you got your on a flanking nade, and then the somber here. No, maybe you just have everybody all clumped up running in, but you do have a tracer behind or a somber behind, right? That's good enough. Start with that. Right, three, two, one, 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 every pressure cycle and have at least try and get one flanker involved. Junkrat actually gets played though. Cap. Dowd is really good at that. Yeah, exactly. Dallas is really good at that. Just, just be consistent with that. And, and that's, and that, if you could do that, you will go a long way towards like helping them to understand the composition, but one step at a time. <laughs> to what extent does the Sigma male trillionaire grants an actual mirror an actual way of reaching success? <laughs> you can't, I cannot believe I'm being asked this question. This, this, this guy, it's on Iraq, on, on, he's asking about Sigma male grind sets. Listen, buddy, bro. If you have to ask me about the Sigma male grind set, you, I, I, you're not a Sigma male, so I can't share. Sigma males don't share their secrets. Sorry, mate. I can't, I can't, I can't do it. Sorry, bro. Good luck next time. Maybe, maybe the alpha male circle will accept you, but not, but not Sigma male. Sorry, mate. Uh, as a support and comp, Diamond Masters, when should I prioritize positioning over cart progress? It's okay to step off the cart to get back. Uh, generally, I prioritize positioning over cart progress uh, whenever I'm in, the cart is in a really, really bad spot. So if the cart's like, uh, this is standing out in the middle of the open, this is terrible. Or uh, if there is a really good position that it could be taking. Um, sometimes I, I get it. Like you're, you're, you're going to be pushing cart sometimes as a support. You don't want to be, but not every diva, tracer, sombra is smart enough to deal with you know, taking cart and allowing you to take a good position. It happens, like, especially in lower ranks, you know, you, you're gonna end up in cart. Um, one little thing I would say as well is that as the fight gets closer to starting, you would wanna take a position over cart. In other words, if it's between fights, you just wanna fight, you just lost, or you just wanna fight, just, you can sit in cart for a little bit. But as the fight gets going, you wanna go, okay, where do I need to be? Okay, the fight's about to start. I need to find somewhere near me that's better than where I'm at right now. Yeah. Uh, with the new hog buffs, do you think hog will be a viable pick? Nope, I do not. I don't think hog will be, I don't think, I think I think it was a good buff. I think it was definitely a buff that he needed, um, but I don't think it's like all of a sudden the hog's just amazing. Um, but that might change. You know, we've seen in Overwatch, it always takes a good six months at least for a, a hero to kind of slide into where he actually belongs. So maybe, maybe hog is better than, because especially with the buff being what it is with the ult charge, it's not at all evident how much of an impact that has. Um, so we would, uh, you know, I don't think he's um, viable at Overwatch League right now. I don't think he does enough, but I don't think it's like, oh, the hero is just trash here. Okay, I kind of think he's trash here, but I'm, I'm, I absolutely could be wrong. What's the best way to play into a Ryan Sig poke comp? Weird, man. Uh, when that comp had high ground, my team was running the ball, trace the summer dive, but Ana was just playing inside of her team. I mean, their comp should lose to dive. Um, their comp is terrible at poking you out before you dive, at least with their tank lineup. They have no Orisa halt or pull. Um, and they have no way of taking split off. And I was like, Ryan and Sig can't play a split. If they're all clumped up on high ground, if you get a, if you get, you're able to get your backline on high ground too. So like, for example, if they're all playing the high ground and you get your Briggs in or whatever up on the turret, Three, two, one, peak, and your ball slams, your tracer comes from behind, your somber comes from behind, and your briggs are staying up top and playing distance. The only thing that they really can do is the Ryan maybe pushes you and hits you with a hammer. Uh, if she's playing inside of her team, then she's not she's not shooting anybody. She's not going to be landing any fat nades. It's going to be harder for her to land fat nades. That's a weird question. Um, I would need more. I would need like maybe a screenshot or something. Um, but this, this, this shouldn't work. If, if you were losing to that, there's probably something else that was going wrong. Um, or maybe they were just the better team.
Well, Ho Hog specifically. Wait, when was he played two of the three Overwatch League playoffs? When was he played? You talking about like last season? Well, last season they buffed Hog to high heaven. They did some disgusting things to the man's damage. Oh, the first season. Yeah, first season because it was sniper comps. Sniper comps and teams had bad understandings of the meta. I think if that, if that season had been played again, um, I mean, I don't know. I, but that's not even really a very fair comparison because that was when you could play as many tanks as you wanted. And I think Junkertown was on the pool. And Junkertown first, for example, is a good hog point. There's good flanks. It's like perfect for him. Um, I think if you remove, like I could theoretically see if 222 is removed, uh, you know, Arissa, Hog, Sigma, Hanzo, Widow, Mercy could be a decent comp on that map, even now. Um, like you could say maybe a Hog would be more valuable than a Flex support there if you're playing Arissa, Hog with a bunch of snipers. Um, but that's just a map specific thing. I don't remember Hog being necessarily a big meta pick then. Um, the problem is just that he's just a very low his hero doesn't do much outside of hook if he doesn't have hook he's not very good at controlling a lot of space um and his yeah yeah I, I, he's just a he's just not a very well designed hero he's fun but he's not very he's hard to balance can you achieve rank one with any hero in the game not no not well no no you can't you can't because the thing is is to get rank one you it takes uh 95 percent skill 99 percent skill and one percent meta pick two percent meta pick but that one percent two percent is like 50 60 i mean could a torbo tp hit 4.6 i'm skeptical maybe but i'm skeptical um but when you get to like 4.5 4.6 and you're really skilled the last couple of percentage points of playing actually strong heroes is really important like, you'd have to be really, really good to get rank one with any hero that's not meta. So, like, Tracer, Kree, Farah, um, uh, Ash, maybe, Hanzo, Hanzo. There, there, there's only a couple, like, the, the, I'd say that the, the better DPS heroes you can get rank one with. But, like, try and get rank one with a Symmetra or a Torbjorn. They're too niche. Or a Bastion. There's no way. Roadhog unbelievably doubtful yeah so so no you, you no, i don't think you can unless they were to buff those heroes then yes you could uh do you have any advice on how to avoid tracers marking me as tracers to make sure that they win the long fights is my job correct me if i'm to press the back lane to win the fight fast in a second i mean it sometimes mirroring tracer is the play like for example if you're talking about like they have a zen comp and you have an on a comp and you want to dive harder and play shorter sight lines and they want to keep you at arm's reach then yeah avoiding the mirror would be helpful um so what you can do is you can change up your pathing you can be unpredictable with your pathing you can ask for resources to help you clear the tracer in other words if their zen is here and your on is here and you're here and the enemy tracer is here what you can do is say hey Ana, can you come with me and help me get rid of this tracer like literally melee range right she's gonna walk with you and then that tracer has to leave right their zen doesn't want to walk into melee range and help because then he's diveable right so you can exploit the fact that your comp once is okay with playing up close and personal um by getting your brig or your ana or your diva to literally just go with you for a second and get rid of the tracer and then you can go dive um if that makes any sense so again it's let with when you're mirroring somebody it's because you prefer your comp to stay at range like the zen right so if you get the other team gets their brawl heroes or their shorter range heroes like the diva the ana the even a, like another dps to come help clear you out their zen can't go oh wow that's really rude i'm gonna go over here and help fight and because then all of a sudden now you can just dive them right um so a, unpredictable pathing and then ask for resources get help from your teammates to clear her out and then you can continue to go um Good question though and keep in mind that mirroring you might need to be mirror like like I i'm curious if like I'm, I'm curious about like what you never give me context about like what compositions or what situations you're getting mirrored by because you know you could also just win the duel 
You could just win the duel. That That's another way to beat the mirror. Uh, unless, obviously, that Tracer is getting a lot of resources. I honestly want to know who my three main support heroes should be. Anna's definite one. Between Mercy, Lucy, and Zen, who would be best for my next two heroes? I'm a silver and I want to climb out, but I don't want to focus on heroes who are good in my rank. I want to heroes who are good. Whoever, whoever you enjoy. I will say this. Um, you already look like you're going towards the realm of I like aiming and clicking and shooting. So I think Zen or a BAP or whatever would be good, but I definitely think Zen should be in there. And then you could fill in Mercy or Lucio however you'd want. But if you have if you're if you're definitely more involved in the shooting and clicking and, and the mechanics, then you want to pick heroes that complement that playstyle a little more. But really you want to more important than that, at least by a little bit, is finding what heroes you would actually enjoy. That's always the answer. Similar playstyles, but more important is do you actually enjoy playing those heroes? Because that's that's gonna that's that's the thing. It's a game, guys. It's a game. So the majority of the time I'm playing DPS. I oh my, what is this? Uh, playing DPS. I feel as the tanks are making tank tank says. Uh, I feel as if the tanks are making. Whoops. Are not. Uh, I'm not sure. Are, are making. What can I do to help the tanks take? Maintain space and last long instead of just going to choke and instantly getting melted before the DPS have time to do anything. Um, just make sure that you're synchronizing your pressure when your tanks act tanks actually take space. Like when they do anything, when they stand at the choke and hold shield, that right in and the enemy team is engaging them, that you have an angle and you're applying pressure. The the goal as DPS is to capitalize off of the windows of opportunity that your deep that your tanks give you. And they might not be very good tanks. They might be very passive tanks, or very stupid or slow tanks, but they will bait attention for a period of time. Good tanks bait attention for a long time and survive for a long time. Bad tanks will not. Good tanks will actually not only bait attention, but they'll actually threaten and survive. Bad tanks won't. Um, but bad tanks will threaten a little bit. Bad tanks will bait attention a little bit. And it's about making sure that when those windows of opportunity arise, that you are getting something out of it. If your tank just pins in the middle of the back line, you're doing something. If your tank is standing there and the enemy team is shooting their shield, well, their attention is on that location that allows you opportunities to get value out of the angles that you can take. So I would look very, very much so at the, the timing uh, and are you synchronizing your pressure with your tank line? Even if your tank line's bad. Uh, same question if I'm playing support and I'm not playing tank, tank again. Uh, you know, are you getting value when your tank line is doing something? Are you looking for nades? Are you playing slightly more aggressive? Are you enabling your tank line to play a little more aggressive because you're healing them well? Uh, or are you punishing the enemy team at the same time? So it depends on the hero. Uh, but I pay very close attention to timing on your DPS and your support play in regards to are you consistently like capitalizing off of what they're doing uh, or allowing them to be more aggressive? Sim is not weak. I just got that. Sim is not weak. No, no. Sim. I would say Sim has. Sim is in a, in a fine spot. She fits very well in niche, and you could very easily one trick her to GM, or t uh, very easily one trick her to top five hundred. But we're talking about rank one, right? And there's too many maps where Sim would not be good um, for her to be a legitimate contender for four point seven. How are you going to prepare for a game that isn't even out yet? You don't. You don't prepare. My focus isn't on being a better game science person, but to understand coaching and communication and leadership and practice working with people more. You don't. So you focus on the other stuff. You jat. I didn't even know you were in Discord. I don't know if I've ever seen you talk. Okay. Uh, I'm a diamond Zen one trick and I get flame from playing Zen. Not certainly that it does more healing. At least half my games from which I lost. Then I'm freezing to learn other sports. Can continue to improve as a one trick. I'm um, I would pick up another hero, like maybe an Ana or a Bap, because those guys do have more healing um, and they provide a little bit more survivability. So like if you were playing Zen Mercy, right? And the enemy team was like Sombra Tracer Ball, I probably wouldn't want to stay Zen there. I would probably prefer to go like a Bap or an Ana to give myself a little more survivability. Um, if we had a Lucio OTP and a, no, we're on a brawl map. I don't really want to play Zen Lucio. That's not a great support lineup on most maps in most situations. So I might want to go Ana or Bap. Uh, so you generally want to build a hero pool of one uh, or two or three heroes where you can pick the best hero for the best circumstance. Um, a lot of the times you'll end up playing more more of one hero than you want to. For example, if if you're like, I really want to play Zen this map, then you can then you can lock this in. But at least having a Bap or an Ana in the pocket will help. Um, even just one other hero, just like an Ana, that's going to significantly increase the number of games where you don't feel like, oh, I trolled because I was on Zen. 
Agent Z main for oh, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Any tips on improving trees or blink mechanics? Practice. <laughs> uh, uh, you just it just practice. You're, you're doing the right things. The fact, oh, I'm still practicing it. I'm getting the hang of it. Just, just practice. Uh, I'm sure there's workshop codes out there that allow you to practice with bots. Um, deathmatch, again, is I've, it's the same answer every time. Deathmatch, there's no life hack at all, as far as I know. Any tips are countering Farah's echo? Uh, yeah, play cover. Uh, and if she gets too close, gets too aggressive, you can kill her. <laughs> Shoot her. <laughs> Shoot her. Uh, stickies might be a little awkward um, unless she's really, really up close, but uh, you, you, you can give Farah fits. Uh, and you can also give Mercy fits as well. Uh, that, that sometimes is even a better kill. Um, at what rank does team comp start to be important? I mean, every rank having a, something of a cohesive team composition matters, uh, but it, it's not a big, big factor. And I would say it definitely is more important in higher ranks, uh, but it's less important even in higher ranks. Like Hago TP still hit top 500. Uh, you know, Sam Torb TOPTP still hit top 500. Um, people will still play, you know, full, you know, spam into Somber Tracer Dive and win, even though they have theoretically should have no way of working. So it, it matters slightly more every rank up you go, um, but not enough to where it would be molding to me to be playing the wrong call. I've won way too many games where we had no business winning if it had been like a competitive scrimmage environment and ranked just because. I mean, to be honest, um, Musin, I'm butchering your name. Uh, that, that applies to really every ring. I mean, there's, there's teams that have won contenders and reshaped Overwatch League meta by following that exact same strategy. Um, that being said top you you do want to try and be playing heroes at the very very top levels that are good right like there's a reason why like we talk about sim torbo tps don't hit 4.7 um even if you were really really good it would be very hard when the enemy team has just as good of a tracer player just because tracer is slightly stronger as a whole um but yeah um is the Uda cycle a good way to deal with decision making? That sounds familiar. Observe, orient, decide, act. Oh, the Air Force. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I've, I've heard of this. So let's open up a little image here. Oh, I can't even, that's a terrible one. Um, okay. Observe, recognize potential risks or problems. Orient, design, and evaluate options. Decide, select an alternative or candidate. Uh, act. Yeah, that's fine. Observe could be um, alt tracking, right? Orient, what are our options? What do we have? Uh, what ultimates do we have? What heroes do we have? What are ways of beating the enemy composition with our composition? Let's decide on what strategy that we want to do, um, given the risks and what we have, and then let's go. Yeah, of course. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely applicable. Um, it's a little trickier and ranked, um, but you could definitely be like, okay, they are running this composition. Uh, I'm playing Zen. These are, these are my options of positioning I'm playing against this composition. Let me decide, okay, that's the, the way I want to play this team fight, and then you go. So you can even break it down to a micro level and it will work well. So this is probably going to be a super pathetic question, <laughs> but how can I quit cheating? After trying it once, I got addicted to at for over a year. My entire game since having walls, I tried too many times to quit. Basically, tilts me that I can, can't play on the same high level without it. So I give up trying to quit. I just quit the game at this point. I know I already. Yeah, I'm here. Hmm. So I'm not. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna like try and be like Mr. Psychiatrist here because I'm, I'm, that's not, I'm not very good at that. But I would ask a question here. 
Why do you cheat? Do you like the feeling of winning games? Do you like feeling like I'm doing really well and like popping off? Because if there's, because I assume you're doing it because it's enjoyable, right? Unless you're like selling accounts or whatever with it, right? So that, so then it becomes a question of find something outside of Overwatch that replicates that same feeling, but you're doing it legitimately, right? Because if you do it because it feels cool, it's it's a satisfying of like domination. It makes it's like, yeah, you got rolled. No. Earn it, earn it doing something else. And if and if you can't fight your you know your your uh, drive to do it in Overwatch, then find something else. Find something else, and I promise you, if you're able to accomplish something legitimately inside overwatch or just something totally unrelated to overwatch you're going to feel so much better about yourself because you know that you actually earned it and i know you're like you're like oh i mean yeah you're, you're, you're like that's a pretty trashy thing to do i wouldn't say that you are a trash person necessarily um, there's a lot, lot worse things that you could be doing, but you're, you're obviously you're ruining games and you're frustrating people and you're making things unfair. And that's not a very nice, that's a pretty cruddy thing to do, but you need to find something that you actually enjoy besides overwatch. It doesn't mean that you're an awful person. Just go find something else. Go do something else. Cause I, I, I understand like you've, you, you've dug a hole, you made a really bad decision and now you're in. Now you're in a, you know, you've, you're kind of, you've dug yourself into a hole. So there is no easy answer to this. So what I would say is similarly to like the 5% rule that we brought up earlier. You're not going to be able to completely like, like you need to completely remove yourself from Overwatch and find something else that you enjoy and suck at something else for a little while. Suck at something else for a little while, but something that you really enjoy doing, that you really enjoy playing or learning, and just go through the actual cycle of actually learning to be good at something. Because the thing is, it's like quizzes, it's like there are people who can aim probably almost as good as you can, or you know, even better in some instances without wall hacks. And you could too. You could. And you're going to realize that, like, you might think that, like, oh, in Overwatch, I have the opportunity to cheat. So it's like, but the thing that you have to understand is, like, there's the same, basically the same opportunity to cheat the system with a lot of other stuff too. So to me, this isn't even a question about how to stop cheating in Overwatch. This is just how to stop taking the easy way, period. And this, this could be a really important point in your life and something that you need to, you need to figure out. Um, I'm not saying that if you continue to cheat in Overwatch that you're going like, to have a terrible life. and right But this is a moment where you kind of have to make an effort to try something and to, to be better in some way, shape, or form when there's a really, really easy way not to. Like you set the standard for how you respond to this kind of difficulty. Um, and I'm not going to pretend I can completely relate. So you need to find something else. And if you can't resist it in Overwatch, fine. Then you need to go cold turkey, quit Overwatch, find something else. Because this isn't going to work. We need to find something else to do. And when you do find something else and have some form of success, you're going to feel amazing because you earned it. So I'm not a psychologist. I'm not a psychiatrist. I, I don't really know much, but I, I can tell you that you need, you, need, you need to find something that you're going to be able to apply yourself to, that you won't be able to cheat yourself out of, and that you'll just feel good about doing. And good luck with that. And in the meantime, I would not say that, that you're you know, a piece of crap. 
you just made it a really stupid decision and you've dug yourself into a hole. You know, it's like you, you got your hand stuck in the cookie jar and then, you know, your mom comes in, what are you doing? You're like, oh, I don't know. You, then you lie to cover it up and then and, it, and worse and worse and worse. And now you've got this entire, even if there's not like external expectation, there's this internal expectation of this is the rank that I play at. Anything less than that is a huge disappointment to myself. But that's just, you're lying to yourself. You've never been able to play at a 4.4 level. It's all just a, 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 an imaginary construction. You've never been that ever that good at any game, at least at this game, excuse me. That being said, that's probably a pretty strong feeling where you f really do feel like I was that good. And so it's going to be very disappointing and very difficult to walk away from that. It, it would be like if you had a, uh, a dream where you had a really, really hot girlfriend, right? Uh, or you were really, really muscular, right? You wouldn't want to wake up. But the problem is, is you're going to have to wake up at some point. And do you want to wake up and this game is going to be done or you're going to get banned or whatever and you've got nothing to show for it? No feeling of accomplishment, no life skills outside of I cheated in a video game? You know? Like even, even though it's just a video game, I can walk away from Overwatch with a little bit of self-confidence that I climbed the GM from basically bronze. That feels pretty good, you know? I, I feel proud about that. Uh, Koskobus, thank you for the sub. But you don't have that same level. I feel sorry for you. Because you don't have, you've... Oh, Koskobus and Kexamus, thanks for the sub, mate. You don't have that same level of satisfaction that I do. You're cheating yourself. You're cheating yourself out of that satisfaction. So do yourself a favor and try something else. Try something else. Yeah, you're welcome. And I'm, I'm telling you, this isn't easy, man. Like I, I, I'm sitting here acting like, oh, just do this. It's not going to be easy. And I can't relate as well. I mean, I can relate in different ways, but I've never been in that kind of a position before. So I feel sorry for you and I wish you good luck and you know, keep it, keep us, keep in touch if you want. Um, Cause that, that's rough. That's really, really rough. And I, re I respect the question. Uh, I did not prepare for this. Absolutely. I have learned so much. The reason I'm still doing Overwatch is because of what I've learned in the game and what I've learned coaching the game. It's been the best experience of my life in terms of learning. You want to cheat on console? I mean... If you if you cheat on console, then you're gonna spend the rest of your life thinking about how you how you did you crossed a line, and it's permanently ruined. Like that's the thing with mistakes is that if you have the opportunity to not make mistakes, and you've learned from that mistake, then there you go. No. But, but you're going to think your entire life that you could have felt good about yourself for never having done a wrong thing in that regard. You know, I don't do. Do you think that I need to go out and commit a murder to feel good about myself rehabilitating from that? Do I need to get like, do I need to become an alcoholic to go through the, alco the 12 steps of AA and feel good about that? No, you don't actively go out and do negative things just to, just because they're not going to have an effect on you. They do have an effect on you. They do have an effect on you. All right. Uh, have some, have some, uh, have some scruples, man. Have some scruples. Have lines that you shouldn't cross. I don't care if it's cheating at a video game or whatever. Um, you probably already answered this, but is Genji any better after the changes? So is he all viable? Yeah, of course he's viable. He's viable. I mean, I think overall the changes were a slight buff. Um, yeah, I think he's viable. What do I do, Spilo? I talk a lot and coach. <laughs> uh, I was watching Does Your Coach Suck video and one specific bit intrigued me. 
it was when you said you coached phase two uh, with a PH, but yeah. Uh, and you said they were slow and indecisive with the goats back then. Is it viable as a coach to say to your team that it's okay to ignore things like map control angles and just to go into six? Uh, yes. Yes. Things like being decisive and working together as a team are, is more important than positioning and, and like little macro details. I would say your timing and plan, it, like to me, there's a hierarchy. Plan and timing, I would have to think about which one's more important. My gut says plan. But then I'm also like, yeah, but if, even if you guys didn't even have a plan and just ran into the enemy team as six, that might be better than actually having a plan. I'm not really sure which one's more important. I would say positioning is definitely less important than planning and timing. And not only is this like theoretically, philosophically, the way I see it, 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 it lines up with my experience as well in Overwatch League and Tier 2 and Tier 3 and, and, and play. Like being decisive and being a good team will cover a multitude of sins when it comes to like map control and macro understanding. So you already feel great about yourself. So here's the other thing, Kager. You feel great about yourself, but is it always about how you feel? If all we did as human beings is thought about like how I feel and how my impression of myself is, we'd all be sociopaths. All of us. Is watching Al POVs a good way to learn how to play? Uh, it, it can help. I would I would recommend being, I would, if I was a lower rank player, like let's say diamond and below, I wouldn't watch Al POVs with the intention of I'm going to copy exactly what they do, but to get some ideas and kind of look, okay, they position where maybe I'm once your masters are GM, you can start to because the game a little bit more and like you'll start to understand more. I would copy more. The danger with lower ranks watching higher rank POVs is not because the game operates completely different. It does to an extent, but it's more because they will do things and you won't understand why, so you'll just blindly copy them. Like for example, let, let's say that the, any, that you have nano boost, right? And the Ana, when she has Nano Boost, plays really aggressively because she's going to look for an aggressive nade. You, as a silver or gold player, might not pick that up and might just think that that's just how you play it on. You just go, you go play hyper aggressive. You might un, you might not understand the context. Um, so I would be, I would, I would watch all POVs, but just take them with a grain of salt. Okay, try and think about, okay, why are they playing? Instead of just think copying, think more along the lines of like, why do you think they're playing like that? Why do you think they use their ability like that? Why do you think they use their sleep dart there or that they nade it there? Uh, uh, why do you think they're positioned there? Uh, again, kind of get yourself thinking more. You can use Al POV as like a, something like a, a big textbook that you kind of read from and kind of see if you can learn something from it by like thinking on it. Not just reading what it says, but taking each topic and thinking on it more. Um, uh, um, Okay. Has eating, oh, so, 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 so. has eating the correct food and doing a sports and doing a sport a heavy impact on your performance? It does not have a heavy impact on your performance. No, but it does have an impact. The other thing that you have to understand is that when it comes to like eating the correct food and being active is just good period. It's a light, it has a heavy impact on your life. So it might not have a heavy impact on your performance specifically, but it has a heavy impact on your life. So it should always be a priority. Um, yeah. Uh, do you think Echo is worth learning? Yeah, I think Echo is fine. I think Echo is a decent hero right now. I mean, she's fallen a little bit out of favor in some things, but she's still a strong DPS hero. And if you enjoy playing her, there you go. I think she's actually a pretty fun DPS to play. Uh, you've oversalted your pasta. How can I fix the issue? Um, you need to make more mac and cheese. The only way is to make more mac and cheese that I know of. And then you can mix it around and you dilute it a little bit. I definitely feel you, bro. I did that with rice a couple weeks ago. I, it just was awful. Salt is great, but if once you oversalt something, it's just ruined. <laughs> it's like there's no going back. Um, Why did you stop working out? I didn't. I actually work out more now than I think I have almost ever have in my life. I stopped doing, I didn't stop doing, but I don't do all the heavy lifts as much. So I still bench about once a week. I still back squat once a week. Um, I deadlift about once a week as well. 
um but i don't go i'm focusing more on like some of my like sp i'm not going for high numbers necessarily and more of training for like explosion strength different things like that so uh the way i structure my workouts is a little more um focused on trying to be uh stronger in other ways besides just the numbers on the lift so like obviously as i get stronger the numbers do go up but for example i don't go for one rep max as near as much as i used to i've got a little bit of a shoulder injury as well which makes it a little awkward with the bench press Will you make me food? I mean, I'm not a great cook, but I can try. My wife will make you food. She will. She's a really good cook. Uh, you, wow, okay. <laughs> uh, somehow I missed that one. Um, Fastest way to build comms and team-based games since in a pinch. Shot yourself in the foot because I focus so much on studying the game. I haven't scrimmed as much. I got a big trial of the team. I really want to be on a math class in those regards, but other trials. Uh, what I would do is I would look at your hero or the heroes that you'll be playing and think about what are the things that you really want to be communicating. Um, like the prioritize, like I call my nanos, I call my nades is on a, or I call my positioning is in, and I call what I want to do with trance. So you get your the couple of really important things that you need to communicate as a hero and you nail those. Um, and you focus on making sure that you're paying really close attention to, you focus on every single team fight. You're thinking about like, what are we trying to do to win this team fight? What's the plan? And you focus on listening towards that and thinking about like, what can I do to contribute to that? So your communication, the most important things that you need to communicate with each hero, think about that. And then make sure that you're thinking and adjusting your play style around like what the plan is. Um, like you're not just autopiloting. I play here as in, but okay, we're doing this. Okay. I'm going to prime play around this. And you can even say, Hey, I'm going to do this to help you out or whatever. Um, yeah. How tall is fellow? Five foot nine. Okay. So you had a bad day, right? Your games were dog. Your girlfriend broke up with you. You failed the music theory quiz. That's a little too. It's a little too specific there, pineapple bro. What do you do to show yourself love? I can tell you what I. I mean, I don't know what works for you guys. I tell you what doesn't work for me is sitting there and eating a lot and doing nothing. What will work for me is getting a little workout done, nothing crazy, just something getting active, feeling, and then cleaning the house or getting a small project done. Whenever you feel badly, the last thing you need to do is to do nothing. That is the worst thing that you can do. You need to do something. Make yourself feel better. Go accomplish something. Clean the house, sweep the floor, catalog some pictures, uh, you know, do, do a little exercise, um, get yourself a facial or something like that. Do something that's productive and will make, like, that, that, that matters. Go for a walk, sure. Write some ideas. Make, oh, you know what really makes me feel good? Is making a plan for the next week. That, I, that, that is a, that 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 is amazing. I love that stuff. Like what I'm gonna do on Monday, Tuesday, I'm gonna get this done. And I don't always stick to it perfectly. I'm pretty accurate, but that that makes me feel great. Don't just sit there. Don't just sit there. That's why depression is so dangerous because it it makes you feel like that's what you want to do, but it's really not what you want to do. And so it just makes it worse. Any tips on avoiding mouse shoulder? Uh, YouTube is your friend. There are a lot of great PT, uh, physical therapy guys out there that will give you way better advice than anything I can give you. I promise you that you will find some great, great YouTube videos on wrist and shoulder health. And I assume that's what you're talking about. How do you deal with anxiety? Uh, ranked anxiety? I know you're here, so you can hear me. You talking about ranked anxiety? Yeah, I, I, I hear you, Elendio. But I'm not, I'm not an expert with that, so I will. No, just normal. Oh gosh. Uh, I'm not at all qualified to answer that question. I can give you a little bit of ex experience is, I would say the 5% rule is push yourself outside your comfort zone a little bit by a little bit, like accomplish things things that make you a little bit anxious, do them. And then pat yourself on the back whenever you do them. 
5% more here, great. Don't overdo it to the point to where it becomes a huge, huge deal. Uh, and then give yourself time to, to relax, to, to step back. Like whether that's, you know, I really didn't want to go do that, but I did it. I was a little anxious about it, but I did it. Great. I'm going to go take a bath, take a shower, read a book, drink some tea, you know, and feel good about it. Uh, but push yourself a little bit outside your comfort zone. Um, being anxious is not a state that you want to be in. And I think anxiety can be described as you're feeling anxious about things or overly anxious about things that you shouldn't be. Um, ranked anxiety, right? It's good to care about a ranked game, but when you care too much or get too emotionally involved, that's when anxiety becomes a negative thing. So be, feeling nothing at all is the worst, right? It's, that's, that's worse than anxiety almost. Um, but you wanna push yourself to the point little bit by little bit toward those things. You're used to, you're not only, those things don't scare you as much as they did anymore, but more importantly, you're used to dealing with and pushing through your anxiety, if that makes sense. Um, purposely kind of putting yourself in situations where there is a little bit of pressure. You become accustomed to it. It doesn't bother you. It's not that the, there's no pressure. It's that the pressure doesn't bother you as much anymore. Um, but you but you also, like, I'm sure there's a lot of other things as well. That's just my take. And I'm not at all qualified. So take what I said with a grain of salt. What do you do when you feel really pressured in a 4.4 lobby and you feel like you're having a space to work with and you're getting shot at from every angle? Um, again, it comes down to prioritize. What do you need to be doing in that moment? Do you think that positioning is really important, that you're positioning well? Uh, I think I would say the one thing that you don't want to prioritize is make sure I land these sleep darts, make sure I land these nades, like that. Ah, that's that's not going to help you very much. But what will help you is think about, okay, where do I, okay, focus, focus. Where do I need to position? The rest of the stuff, I, I can't worry about that. I might miss every single sleep dart in the primary monkey, but I will position myself well. I will communicate my nanos. So what you need to do is like, when you have a lot of situations where you're feeling a little overwhelmed, um, focus on something that's very controllable and within your uh, capability to have an impact on, not your mechanics, uh, not all the little details, but just the, the really basic stuff and then let the other stuff go. Because again, you can't control how you feel. You can only control what you do. So if you feel like you have no space, you feel like I'm getting shot from every angle, yes, you might. But thinking about how you feel that way will not fix it. Instead, completely address that, I feel that way, I get it, it sucks. So let me think about this positioning aspect and maybe the feeling will get better. If it doesn't, okay, who cares? At least you got something out of the scrim. You didn't just sit there and cower you actually were productive. You might int the entire scrim, but you were at least thinking while you were inting. You were learning while you were inting. Because trust me, I understand what this feels like. Like I've been in those lobbies too. I was like 4.1K for about one month before I quit the game. And it was stressful as all get out. It was really stressful. And, but I, I knew that like, that there was nothing I could do to change that. So just had to do what I had to do.